Kick-ass facts. One more video about some weird Canadian nonsense. Pew, 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 pew. Eh? Hans Island is a small, uninhabited, barren rock in the Arctic with no known reserves of oil or natural gas. Still, there has been an ongoing territorial dispute between Denmark and Canada over who owns this little rock. The island was first disputed in 1933, but largely forgotten about during World War II. I mean, there was a lot of other shit going on. The dispute began again in 1984 when, during a visit to the island, the Danish minister for Greenland planted the national flag and left a message saying welcome to the Danish island along with a bottle of brandy. No, no. Ever since then, when the flag on the island is periodically changed between a Danish and a Canadian flag, the bottle is also replaced. The Canadians leave a bottle of Canadian club and the Danes leave a bottle of schnapps. Good news, however, as of August 2022, Canada and Denmark have agreed to share the island. In the most Canadian thing you're probably going to hear, two men on the northeast coast of Newfoundland saved a Greenland shark from choking to death on a chunk of moose. It's speculated that the hungry shark bit off more than it could chew <laughs> from a nearby bank where hunters gut moose and throw the scraps into the water. The men arrived on the scene and began pulling out the two foot long piece of moose, a couple of yanks, and it came right out. Said one of the men, once the obstruction was cleared, the men tied a rope around the shark's tail and began to drag it back out to sea. After the shark lay in shallow water for a few minutes, it started breathing again. It continued to lie there for almost half an hour and then swam back to sea. It took almost a year and 14 trades for Montreal man Kyle McDonald to turn a red paper clip into a house in Kipling, Saskatchewan. In 2005, McDonald decided he wanted to live in a house, but he didn't have a job. So instead of posting a resume online, he saw a red paperclip on his desk and decided to post that online instead and offer it up as a trade. Almost immediately, a pair of young women in Vancouver offered to trade him a pen that looks like a fish. He traded the pen the very same day for a hand-sculpted doorknob from Seattle, Washington. He then traveled to Massachusetts to trade the doorknob for a Coleman camp stove with fuel. Then he went to California to trade the camp stove for a Honda generator. From there, he went to Queens, where he traded the generator for an instant party, an empty keg, an IOU for filling the keg with the beer of the bearer's choice, and a neon Budweiser sign. That doesn't say party. I don't know what does. Then he traded the instant party to a Quebec comedian and radio personality for a snowmobile. He traded the snowmobile for a two-person trip to British Columbia. He traded the second spot on the trip for a box truck. He traded the box truck for a recording contract with Metalworks in Mississauga, Ontario. He traded the contract to Jody Nant, maybe, for a year's rent in Phoenix, Arizona. He traded the year's rent in Phoenix for one afternoon with Alice Cooper. He traded an afternoon with Alice Cooper for Kiss Motorized Snow Globe. He traded the snow globe to Corbin Burnson actor and avid snow globe collector for a role in the film Donna on Demand. He then traded the movie role for a two-story farmhouse in Kipling, Saskatchewan. The mayor of Kipling offered the trade and was planning to auction off the movie role.